Noble Review, Macroeconomics and Microeconomics, for use with introductory college macro and micro courses, as well as the AP macro and micro exams. In this podcast, we'll go over the top 10 concepts that you need to know unit by unit. Noble 5, Policies and Growth, Macro. Number 1. How do the ideas of classical economists and Keynesian economists differ? There are several references to classical and Keynesian economic theories in previous podcasts. While there are many differences between the two schools of thought, here are five simple things to remember about each. Classical economic theory. 1. Focus on the economy over the long run. 2. Economy will self-correct because markets are efficient. 3. More savings leads to more investment. 4. Wages and prices are flexible. 5. No need for active government involvement. Keynesian economic theory. 1. Focus on the economy in the short run. 2. Economy will not always self-correct. 3. More savings leads to less consumption. 4. Wages and prices are sticky going down. 5. Active fiscal and monetary policies are necessary. Number 2. What are some economic theories that are critical of government policy? There are many economic critics of fiscal and monetary policy actions. Here are some of those ideas. Monetarism argues that the central bank often mismanages the money supply and causes unnecessary inflation. When the Fed or central bank increases the money supply, it cannot increase real GDP and alleviate unemployment. It will only increase nominal GDP and therefore inflation. This argument can be seen in the monetary equation of exchange, which is MV equals PQ. M is money stock. V is velocity, or how often $1 is spent in a year. P is price level. And Q is real GDP. Multiplying P and Q gives us nominal GDP. Velocity is relatively stable, so an increase in the money supply will cause inflation and not guarantee an increase in real GDP. Monetarists propose monetary rule for policymakers, which states that the Fed should only increase the money supply by an amount that is equal to the expected growth rate of the economy. The ideas of neutrality of money and quantity theory of money are similar in that the Fed cannot alter real GDP. Rational expectation theory also dislikes active economic policies by the government and central bank. Rational expectation theory argues that people adjust their economic decisions based on the anticipated outcomes of policies. For example, if the Fed announces it will buy bonds and keep interest rates low, People raise their inflation expectations and ask for higher wages. This would reduce output as the Fed is trying to increase output. Supply-side economic theory focuses on shifting aggregate supply instead of aggregate demand. In theory, this is a good way to deal with stagflation, where we have high inflation and unemployment caused by a leftward shift of the short-run aggregate supply curve. For example, If there is a negative supply shock, the government can reduce taxes for all producers. This would lower the cost of production and shift short-run aggregate supply to the right. Inflation and unemployment would fall. Number three, how do you illustrate long-run economic growth? Long-run economic growth occurs when there is an increase in real GDP or real GDP per capita over time. The main causes of long-run economic growth are 1. Increased quantity of economic resources, 2. Improved quality of economic resources, 3. Improved education and training programs, 4. Increased productivity and new technology. You can illustrate long-run economic growth in two ways. 1. 
an outward shift of the production possibilities curve, or two, a rightward shift of the long run aggregate supply curve. Number four, what is the relationship between real interest rates and long run economic growth? There is an inverse relationship between real interest rates and long run economic growth. When real interest rates rise, investment spending falls. Businesses have less incentive to invest in research and development projects, which could lead to technological breakthroughs in production. Businesses are also less likely to replace depreciated capital goods. The growth of capital stock or all of a nation's capital goods will decrease and the long-run growth rate will fall. When real interest rates are low, businesses are more likely to increase investment spending and develop new technology. This will increase the formation of capital stock and the growth rate of the economy. Number five, what is the crowding out effect of expansionary fiscal policy? The crowding out effect is an unintended consequence of expansionary fiscal policy. When the government increases spending, it borrows from the loanable funds market. The government finances the increased spending by issuing new bonds. This causes real interest rates to rise. The increase in interest rates causes households and businesses to cut back on spending. This means that consumption and gross investment are crowded out by the expansionary fiscal policy that caused real interest rates to rise. The loanable funds market illustrates the equilibrium real interest rate resulting from the supply, representing the lenders, and demand, representing the borrowers, of loanable funds. When the government borrows, the demand for loanable funds will increase. Another interpretation is that the government reduces the private sector's supply of loanable funds. Both situations show that when the government spends more to increase aggregate demand, the real interest rate will rise. Remember, when the government increases spending, aggregate demand will increase. However, the increase in aggregate demand may not reach its true potential because of the increased interest rate caused by the government's borrowing, or a greater budget deficit. This can be detrimental to long-run economic growth. Number six, how does a change in savings affect the loanable funds market? The loanable funds market shows the relationship between the real interest rate and quantity of loanable funds. If there is an increase in savings by the private sector, the supply of loanable funds increases or shifts to the right. This causes the real interest rate to fall. When the real interest rate decreases, investment spending will increase. This is good for the growth of capital stock and long-run economic growth. In Noble 6, you will see that low real interest rates depreciate the value of currency because foreigners will get a lower return on bonds. When the currency depreciates, net exports increase as the goods look cheaper to foreigners. If there is a decrease in savings by the private sector, the supply of loanable funds decreases or shifts to the left. This causes the real interest rate to rise. When the real interest rate increases, investment spending will decrease. This is bad for the growth of capital stock and slows down the rate of long-run economic growth. In Noble 6, you will see that high real interest rates appreciate the value of currency because foreigners are attracted to the higher return on bonds. When a currency appreciates, net exports decrease as goods look expensive to foreigners. Number seven, how does a change in aggregate demand relate to the short-run Phillips curve? The short-run Phillips curve is a model that shows the inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment. The unemployment rate is measured on the x-axis and the inflation rate is measured on the y-axis. When aggregate demand shifts to the right, price level increases, that is, inflation rises, and real GDP increases, which means unemployment falls. Therefore, point-to-point -point movement leftward along the short-run Phillips curve represents an increase in aggregate demand. When aggregate demand shifts to the left, price level decreases, that is, inflation falls, and real GDP decreases, that is, unemployment rises. 
Therefore, point-to-point -point movement rightward along the short-run Phillips curve represents a decrease in aggregate demand. Number 8. How does a change in short-run aggregate supply relate to the short-run Phillips curve? When there is a shift of the short-run aggregate supply curve, the short-run Phillips curve will also shift. If there is a rightward shift of the short-run aggregate supply curve, the short-run Phillips curve will shift left. This is because inflation and unemployment both decrease. If there is a leftward shift of the short-run aggregate supply curve, the short-run Phillips curve will shift right. This is because inflation and unemployment increase at the same time. That's stagflation. Number 9. How do inflation expectations affect the short-run Phillips curve? Inflation expectations wield a lot of power within an economy. In Noble 3, we saw that changes in inflation expectations shift the short-run aggregate supply curve. When inflation expectations rise, resource costs rise, and short-run aggregate supply shifts left, causing high prices and high unemployment. This is represented by a rightward shift of the short-run Phillips curve. Here are two important ideas to remember about the ADAS model and the Phillips curve. 1. When aggregate demand shifts one way, move point-to-point -point the opposite way along the short-run Phillips curve. 2. When short-run aggregate supply shifts one way, the short-run Phillips curve shifts the opposite way. Number 10. What is the relationship between inflation and unemployment in the long run? In the long run, there is no trade-off between inflation and unemployment. The economy will always return to full employment, which is represented by the long-run Phillips curve. It is a vertical line at the economy's natural rate of unemployment. If the economy is operating to the right of the long-run Phillips curve in the short run, the economy is experiencing a recessionary gap, which means it has high unemployment. If the economy is operating to the left of the long-run Phillips curve, there is an inflationary gap, which means we have high inflation. That wraps up this episode of Noble Review's Top 10 Economic Concepts. Now, for extra study resources, please visit my website at mrmedico.info. Thanks for choosing to learn with the Noble Review. Till next time.